Hello everyone, so this is Pratigya from Coding Blocks and in this series of tutorials I am going to teach you Python. So this series will be beneficial if you are already acquainted with the coding concepts, maybe in C++, maybe in C, maybe in Java, right? So we are going to start with Python. So I will share a few interesting things about Python, right? So Python is a very easy language to learn. So I hope you all will grasp things quickly and second thing about python is it is a interpreted language the code is executed line by line line by line right it is not compiled it is directly executed and one more thing about python is it is a very useful language it is it can do almost anything can do almost anything because there are a lot of libraries available so we can do machine learning in python we can do scientific computation using scipy we can also do mathematical computation using numpy we can also build games using the pygame library and there is a this open uh, is very popular for image processing projects then this popular framework django which is used for building web servers chatbots right so you can do almost anything with python and there are a lo lo lot more libraries available in python right so it is very useful language to learn and it is very easy to learn python right so like other languages python also has similar concepts it has variables it has input output statements it has loops it has if else it has classes and objects and many other things right so one interesting thing is everything is a object in python so it is a object oriented language right so in in the last videos we have discussed how you can set up python so in this video i will discuss how you can run python on your system so if you have installed python so there are three ways to run python so the first way is using command prompt right so there, there, there are multiple ways. So one way is using command prompt. So you can directly execute Python through through your shell. Second is you can save the code in a file, right? Code in a file and then execute that code. And the third way is you can also use Jupyter no notebooks to run Python. So I will be using this way later on. So I will also show these ways how you can run python through command prompt and how you can uh, save your code in a file also right so this is the command prompt so you you have to type type python so interactive shell will open this is the python interactive shell so in this you can see these three arrows so this basically represents you have to write the code you will write your code here right so there is a very simple statement called print right so i'm going to print hello so i can write print hello like this right since i am using uh, python 2.7 so this is how we write print or i can write i can create one variable a equals to 10 i can create another variable b equals to 20 and i can write print a plus b so this gives me 30 right and i can also take some number as input let's say number equals to input so i can call this input function to take input some number so now this shell is waiting for my input let's say the number is uh, 15 right and if i now print the number so you can see the output is 15 if you want to print the square of number so you can write number into number so it is 220 so this input statement is for your taking input a number this is for your printing something right suppose i want to enter a name and i want to print hello name right so i can say name equals to input and along with it i want to display a message enter your name so let's say my name is prateek but this gave me an error this gave me a error for reading strings and other type of data we must use the raw input function right so instead of writing name instead of writing input i should write raw input so now i can write enter your name 
so it is asking for my name i said pratik so yes so now you can print the name so what is the name yes the name is pratik and i can also say uh print welcome plus name right so i got a message welcome pratik so you can use raw input to take the input you can use input to read some integer right so this this was how you can use python through your command prompt so i will just exit this shell right the next way is using the file so i will create one new file on my desktop so i am using sublime so let's say on my desktop i create one file which is hello name.py so in this file i am just going to create a name variable so which will take input one name from the user so enter your name so once the users user enter his name so you can just print it so you can write print hello welcome ya yeah, fir hello plus name right so plus is basically a operator which is overloaded for the string class or the string object so when two strings are added so it means concatenation right so plus is doing the concatenation here so concatenation using plus so this is how you write a single line command so hash is basically a command so this this is a command right so this is a command so you can use hash to write a single line command in python so let's run this program from our command line so i open the command prompt i go to desktop and in the desktop i have this file hello name.py so you have to write python followed by file name to execute this file so it is asking for your name so i said pratik so the program says hello pratik so this is a very simple program which reads one string and prints it right so let's try one more program so let's write some more code suppose i want to uh take input a number and print its square so in the same code you can write x equals to input and you can print square of x is x into x but this might give you error let's see so again i go to desktop python so first i give my name right now it is it is waiting for another input so let's say the x is now 10 but you got an error right so the error is the program cannot python can cannot uh, concatenate string and the integer objects so what is happening is so this thing is a integer and this thing is a string so this operator is not overloaded when one of the object is integer so we must type cast it into a string so how do we type cast it using this str function so if i give some integer here and use this function so this integer gets converted into a string so if i want to print this so i have to write str of x into x so let's try this program again so let's say abc and let's say 5 yes the square of x is now 25 so this is how i can run my program through command line right so the next way which i am going to discuss is using the jupyter notebook so let's see so i have already installed jupyter notebook in my system 
so i go to uh, desktop and i start my jupyter notebook using this command jupyter hyphen notebook yeah so this starts a server i can create one notebook by going to new and here i can write my code so let's say again i want to take some integer as input or let's say x is 4 and i want to print square of this number so i can say print x into x So you can execute this code. Using control enter right. So this gives me 16. So you can create a, a new cell right. So let's say now I want to take some more input. So name equals to the benefit of Jupyter notebook is you do not need to execute whole, whole code again. So you can divide your code into multiple blocks and you can execute each block independently, right? Because Python again is an interpreted language and you can execute every line of code independently. So let's say name equals to raw input and you say print name. So let's run this code. Let's say the input is Pratik. So you got the output as Pratik, right? Or you can say see out hello followed by name. Let's run this code again. So I'm using control enter to run this code. So let's say uh, Pratik and let's run it. So the output is hello Pratik. So this is input and this is the output, right? So this is how you work with the Jupyter notebook. So this is a very handy way to work in python if you are experimenting with things then this is really very handy right so i recommend you to all install this jupyter notebook and code along with me right so i hope you understood this tutorial and in the next tutorial we will talk about data types and more things in python right